Welcome back to Red Recap. Today, we are reviewing a highly rated and highly viewed short film. Watch till the end for the name of the movie. This film begins with two kids tagging a wall in a neighborhood. The neighborhood thugs spot them and a chase ensues. They ran on foot. While the scary looking tattooed thugs drove in one of those LA signature old school whips, the kids split up and the car continues to chase down one of the assailants. Let's take a moment to acknowledge this tattoo. Three emojis come to mind when I see this tattoo. I want to say this tattoo grew with him, but I don't understand it, so I'm just going to move on. But drop a comment of what emojis come to your mind. The young Vado eventually ran up to a vehicle and hopped in. Turns out his OG were posted up in their old school, just around the block. We now know we're dealing with two rival street gangs. They have a brief standoff, revving their vehicle engines, guns drawn, waiting for someone to buck. Then some lady pushing a baby stroller rolls up right in the middle of both vehicles. She's stuck like deer in headlights in the worst possible position. Not sure if she was the catalyst, but they de-escalated the situation and both drove their separate ways. Before we get into it, to the veterans, welcome back. Every week we break down unique films that we like that you might have missed. Check out our videos and consider subscribing. We're giving away $100 to a random subscriber in the comment section this October. That said, they were friends as kids playing soccer in the neighborhood park. But the older they grew, the harder it was to maintain that bond. See, they unfortunately come from families and rival gangs. The friendship felt risky, especially for Juan's brother Ignacio aka Anacho, constantly badgering Juan to stop hanging out with Mateo. These best friends are now caught at the crossroads. PSA when you watch this short film, and yes please go support these amazing creators. Somewhere between the 750 and 820 mark, the movie goes silent. Maybe it's a copyright issue, or maybe just my location, but you can't hear anything. Just a quick heads up, it's not your TV, it's the movie. Thankfully, it's just some filler scenes. If you skip past 820, you won't miss much. Juan suddenly starts avoiding Mateo. It becomes obvious to Mateo, but he can't quite place a finger on what's happening. Juan stops showing up to play soccer and deliberately ignores Mateo when he waves to him at the bus stop. Unaware of Nacho's instructions to Juan not to hang out with Mateo anymore, Mateo pushes further. Mateo is in the soccer field playing alone when he sees Juan walking past. He catches up to Juan to ask him what's been going on, but Juan seems a little distant. Juan tries to brush him off insisting that he's just been busy, but Mateo keeps applying pressure. Unfortunately, this was a bad day for him because right before they are about to part ways, Juan's big brother Nacho pulls up on them as they were about to shake hands. It looked really bad because it looked like Juan was following Nacho's instructions. So he decides to take matters into his own hands. Nacho and his goons try to intimidate Mateo, but Mateo is unfazed. He lives with his big brother, who happens to be a super gangster in his neighborhood and admittedly crazy. Mateo's dismissive attitude makes Nacho pissed and begins pistol whipping him. He hit him a couple of times before his friends pull him off. Nacho and his goons shoves Juan into the car. They drive away, leaving Mateo bruised up on the ground. Mateo slowly peels himself off the sidewalk as the neighborhood kids stop and stare at him in shock. Not sure if the look in his face is shame or familiarity, but they have a slight stare down before the kids ride up on their bikes. Mateo walks back home and tries to hide his face. As he walks through the backyard where his brother and friends having a little shindig, he tries his best to hide his bruises, but then he hears someone call his name. It's his crazy brother, Alejandro, who's fresh out the pen. Mateo hesitates, but has no choice. He's eventually pushed in the circle and has to explain what happened to his face. Okay, so he tries not to snitch, but remember the kids from the bike that watch him get a beat down. They already ran and told your mom who happened to be in Alejandro's backyard the moment she was getting the news celebrating Alejandro's return. And as soon as they tell her, you can see the shock on her face. Alejandro sees the shock on her face and he forces her to speak up. Talk about terrible timing. All hell breaks loose at this point, and Alejandro is ready to go back to jail today. The men leave the beers and the tacos in the backyard and beeline straight to Nacho's neighborhood to get answers. Nacho and Juan are back on their block. While reminiscing on old times as kids, Alejandro pulls up with Mateo and some goons. There's a brief back and forth argument where you realize that Nacho and Alejandro were probably also childhood friends who were also forced to become enemies by their old heads as they got older. Things escalate rather quickly when someone from Nacho's organization lets a shot off. Shots start ringing all over the place, pandemonium, and in what seemed like seconds everywhere goes dead silent. Alejandro and one of his friends were able to stumble back to the car and drive away.
but everyone else felt prey to the perpetuating violence of the streets. <laughs>